Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's classroom. What we're going to be doing today is going over the classification of matter. So make sure that you have your notes set and that you're filling in exactly what you see on the screen. Uh, so the question that we're going to be looking at for all of today is how do you classify different types of matter? So there are two big categories of matter. And the first one that we're going to be looking at, they're called pure substances. And all a pure substance is something that has a uniform composition of atoms. Okay, now that sounds very nondescript, but it actually tells you a lot. So what do we mean by a uniform composition of atoms? Well, there are two substances out there in the universe that are considered uniformly composited. So we have compounds, and they're pure substances that are made up of at least two different atoms. For example, water and salt. Elements, on the other hand, are pure substances that are made up of only one type of atom. For example, nitrogen gas, N2, and helium. Now, what makes all of these things uniformly composited? Well, that means that there's a set formula to how they appear in nature. For example, water is always H2O, which means that it always contains two hydrogens and one oxygen. That never changes. Its composition is uniform. That's an example of a compound. The same thing can be said of salt, which I don't have, but I'm going to draw it anyway. So we have Na, and then we have Cl. All right, it's always one Na and one Cl. Elements, on the other hand, are also uniformly composited. It's just that they are only made up of one type of atom. So for example, nitrogen is N2, which means it has two nitrogens always. Helium, on the other hand, is just an element in its pure state, monatomic. It only has one atom. Now, one of the most important things to realize about these pure substances are that they cannot be physically separated. What does that mean? Well, let's use water as our example, since it's right up here. Water is always made up of two hydrogens and one oxygen. It is not possible through physical changes to separate these hydrogen from the oxygen in water. That's what uniform composition means, that the composition doesn't change, so it's not possible to do that. Well, we can't physically do this. It's not possible to physically sort the hydrogen from the oxygen in water. What we can do, though, is chemically alter these things. And so chemical changes can be used to separate hydrogen and oxygen from water, but no physical change can do that. It also works for nitrogen. Nitrogen, N2, always appears as a pair, two nitrogens stuck together. You cannot physically separate these nitrogen from each other, but if you chemically alter this, you can separate the nitrogens from each other. Okay, And so that's a big thing, that pure substances cannot be physically separated from each other, but chemically they can. We talked about the first broad category of things, pure substances, but now let's talk about the next one, mixtures. Mixtures are made up of just two or more substances. So what's the big difference? Well, if we're looking at pure substances, which I'm going to just put down PS, and then we're looking at mixtures, which I'm going to put just mix, pure substances are chemically bonded to each other. So they actually have a uniform formula. And so that means that you can write formulas for pure substances. Okay, and when I mean formulas, I'm talking about chemical formulas like, you know, H2O or something like that. Now, mixtures are not bonded to each other. In fact, it's really just two things sort of floating around in each other for the most part. And so they also do not have formulas for each other because they're literally just mixed together. That's the point of a mixture. And so you would not have a formula like H2O or something for mixtures. Now, there are two types of mixtures out there. The first type of mixture is called a homogenous mixture. The word homogenous, you've probably seen before. It appears a lot on milk and dairy products and stuff. But the word homogenous just means that it looks like it's the same throughout. For example, if I had a cup of milk... It looks like it's just made up of white liquid, but in reality, there are hundreds of different things floating around inside of there. 
Okay, And so even though there are hundreds of things floating inside of there, they're not bonded to each other. There's no formula for milk, Okay, unlike, you know, formulas for water or for salt or for sugar or something like that. Now, mixtures um, that appear as though they are made up of one thing, even though they're not, are called homogenous mixtures. And so the thing about homogenous mixtures are that most of the things that we kind of drink every day are probably examples of homogenous mixtures. For example, juice, Kool-Aid, things like that, they're actually made up of very many different things. Now these things are not bonded to each other and there would be no simple formula to sort of clarify what that would be. But that's the difference between a mixture and a pure substance. Pure substances have formulas. They are bonded to each other chemically. Mixtures, on the other hand, are just what they sound like. They're not bonded. They are just mixed together. The other type of mixture is called a heterogeneous mixture. And that is a mixture that is clearly made up of at least two different things. The word hetero means different. So when we take a look at like, you know, sort of a bag of M&Ms or something, you can clearly see that there are many different things in it trail mix, sand, if you look at it, you can see that there are different pieces and different parts to it. And that's what a heterogeneous mixture is. It's literally just a collection of different things. And you can clearly see, as in these examples, you know, especially this M&M one up here, that they're not bonded to each other. There's no way to see that. So there was an important fact about pure substances, and that was that they could not be physically separated. Now, the thing that makes mixtures very different from pure substances is that they can all be physically separated from each other. And there are different lab techniques that allow you to do that. You could filter things, you can distill things, you can use a chromatograph to separate things, you can sublimate things or crystallize things. There are ways of separating things in both homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. So that means that if you do a certain type of physical change, you can separate these things. And it becomes really easy to kind of think of a way to separate M&Ms. Like if you wanted to separate them by color, all you'd have to do is pick them out. So I can take out all of the blue ones and separate those aside and put all the orange ones somewhere else. Now, if you wanted to separate Kool-Aid or something like that into its separate parts, what could you do? Well, you could boil away the water. And by boiling away the water, all you'd be left with is that powder, that Kool-Aid powder in the bottom of the glass. And so there are always ways of physically physically separating mixtures. Now, you should have a chart like this. So what I want you to do is try to fill in this. So you can pause this video and see if you can fill in these terms. So hopefully you got this first part correct, but the broad category we're looking at is classifying matter. And it asks you a question, can it be separated by physical means? If yes, that is a mixture. If no, then it's a pure substance. Now, this little arrow in between is representing physical changes. Now, why? Mixtures can be separated into pure substances. The same way that you can put pure substances together to make a mixture. Now, if you take a look at pure substances, it asks, is it made up of more than one kind of atom? If yes, then that would be a compound. If no, then that would be an element. Now, the arrow chemical change in between here is because you can chemically turn compounds and elements into one another. All right, and then we have our very last bit, which are the different types of mixtures. Is the composition uniform? If yes, it's homogeneous. If no, it's heterogeneous. And so this is how we classify all of matter. The first broad category is either going to be mixture or pure substance. The next categories depend on where we're going. So if it's a pure substance, it will either be considered a compound or an element. And if it is a mixture, it'll either be homogeneous or it'll be heterogeneous. Remember the arrows though. So only mixtures can be physically separated. Pure substances cannot. Instead, they have to be chemically separated.